Welcome to our IT students that are here for their PAT. You want some tips and ideas for it? So that's your practical assessment task. We are looking at how we can use SQL with our graphs. So the prerequisites for this video, what you need to have done before what doing this video is you need to at least know one of the techniques in order to show a chart. We've got two videos for that. We've got the one where we use shapes, it's very complicated, and another one where we use the T-chart component. So you need to know that and you need to know SQL. So you're probably in grade 12, you want to use that SQL or combine it with a chart. If you know all those things, then you can do this video. Please take note, if you only watched one of the different graph techniques, then you can go to the YouTube description and you can go directly to the chapter that relates to the technique that you know. Um, I suggest the T-chart one. I'm going to start with the T-chart one and then move to the to the shape one. But yeah, so let's go. We're going to try using SQL. How can we do an SQL statement and then integrate that into our chart? So the, the first thing is to make sure that you've got your database with data in it. And ideally, the, 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 for the example that I'm going to show you today, the, the best one for charting, particularly for like pie charts, is you really want to have some sort of category um, field, some sort of field that where things can be of a type of category or something like that, um, something where like there can be a lot of one type or a lot of another type. So we've got a lot of type bakery and condiments, but there's some multiple of bakery and multiple condiments. Those are the nice type of things that you can do. Uh, maybe you can do it according if your database has people and you wanted to group it according to gender, for example. Maybe you've got two different genders. That could be like a type of category. Or if they have different grades, then that's quite a nice category. So you can get all the grade 10s or 11s or 12s. Obviously, it depends largely on the data in your database. You don't have to have it, but just for the example that I'm going to do, it's going to be quite nice to have that type of style or that type of field in your database. So first things first is I've just to look at the database, what I've got on my uh, data module you'll see I've got a data module here on the side if we go to it you'll see that we've got our ADO table we've got our ADO connection we've got our data source now I've added a ADO query for those of you who've forgotten go look at the videos on how to do SQL in Delphi you need an ADO query and I've just included a, a data source for the query so that we can see the results of our query when we get to the DB grid but we don't actually need it but I just want to show you what the results look like so that's the query and that's also connected to the connection but there's no SQL in it so what we're going to do so we can see not there we've got yeah we can see the data now first of all I want to create a query that's going to group everything according to the categories and find some sort of statistic or some sort of information on that particular group. How about we find the average item stock? You could find the average item price. You could find the max. So I'm going to use aggregate functions combined with groupings in my ADO query. So I'm going to just scroll down a bit. Yep, I've got uh, my two examples. This is going to be my T chart example. So what I've done is I've put a T chart on the screen and I've made it. If you if you double click on the T chart, you can go and select a series. And if you can see here, my series is of top bar chart so we can use a bar chart for that just so we got another example of a type of chart that's great and so that's what i've got there but i'm just going to move this out the way first because i'm going to run the code on this particular button but i want to see the results there so let's, have, let's double check it so we're going to double click on the average stock so that's what we want to find and i've changed the caption of the chart and i've changed the title of the the, the category of the, of the series. So I've given it all nice little detail. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do an ADO query. So with the DM PAT database, DM PAT example, that's the data module that's on here. You can see if we come here, you can see this block here. That's DM PAT example. So we access in this particular block. What do we want to do? We want to access the ADO or the query or the ADO query. So it's query, which is, I think it's query chart. I think we called it query chart, query chart dot. Now we want to, first of all, make sure that it's not open. So just, just to be sure, we want to make sure that the active or if it's closed, it should be closed. Okay. So we close it if we want to. So remember we switch it off, then we can change the SQL, then we can um, edit the code. So we're going to go query chart now here's where we put in the sql so sql dot text okay so here's where we can put in our sql statement our select and all that jazz from here so what are we going to do so i'm going to go select now i'm going to want to get the average 
stock. So that's an aggregate function, AVG. And in brackets, I want the actual stock. So which one is it? The item stock field. So I want the average item stock. I want the average of the item stock. Now I want to give that, and I'm gonna, just because it could be like ran like numbers that we're going to make that as give it a nice little field name. We're going to call this as and give it some sort of name. So I'm going to call it as average. Okay, so that's the name of the field. And we are going to get this from, I'm going to do this all on a new line so we can see it from, well, let's do the from on the new line because sometimes that looks a little bit nicer when you do something like this. There we go. So there we go. We're going to do this from, I'm actually going to end that there and put a plus sign so we can construct our string. So there we go. From, what are we doing? There we go. From which table? It's from the TBL items table. I know what the database looks like in advance. So we're going to get it from there. So that's going to be the average stock from TBL items. But I want it grouped according to the category. So I want it grouped by category. There is a category field grouped by category. But that means I want to have the word category, bakery, and then the average of that particular category so actually when i select i actually need the category here as well category and then the average of the item stock and then from tbl items grouped by category normally when you've got an aggregate function and you've got another field you are doing a grouping so you must always group by the fields that aren't having any aggregate functions attached to them so we can do something along those lines so select from that table and you can put a where clause in if you want to be specific ones you want only particular ones that type of thing or you can add some um, code where you want a particular category where category equals something you could do that if you want but we want to have all of them because we want them for the chart so that's my first step and then I'm going to say the query I think that's done with my query so do those two lines now I'm just going to make sure that I've got a space at the end I'll make sure that if you do something like this that you've got a space at the end otherwise if you don't, then that from is just going to put right on the edge there and it's not going to be able to recognize it. So that's a little tip. And here I'm going to say query chart dot open. I want to see the results of this so, so you can see that we, we are getting the right thing. So to do that, what I've done is I'm going to connect this table, this a DB grid. Um, I'm going to change its data source. I'm going to change it to the data source that's connected to the chart so dsc chart so at the moment it's nothing so i'm going to click on that button and see what the results look like so first test your query see that you're getting the right data once you've got your data working you can then move it towards doing the chart part so if i click on it there we go so we can see all the different categories and their average now that's quite convoluted all the data uh, i'm going to round it just to get whole numbers that would probably be a nice little idea so the only thing i'm going to add here is not only i'm going to find the average i'm going to round it round this uh, field there we go round the average stock and so if i do that then i should get a nice indicator of the average so there we go so there's nine in stock on average for bakery 26 for canned food and so on so you got nine. now i want to put this in a bar chart just to see what the average stock is that's the idea so what i'm going to do now now that i've got the query where I want it to be and with the data that I want to do. Now I can traverse that query. So I can say, okay, now let's go query chart dot first, which will go to the first record in that chart that we've just done SQL on while not uh, query chart, query chart dot end of files, exactly the same as you would do with your normal traversing an algorithm. Uh, query chart dot next that's our generic little going through the the query okay so we know what the query looks like so what i'm going to do is i'm literally going to go and say okay what i'm going to do is i'm going to add to my my t chart so i'm going to move this t chart up here i'm going to say okay yeah mr t chart this is the t chart it's called cht um, example two so we're going to use that so CHT example two, I'm doing example two first, dot which series, we've got one series, so series square bracket zero dot add. Now we're going to add, now what are we going to add? We need to add a value, we need to add a, what the category's name is or what the thing's name is and then a color. 
Okay, so first thing I'm going to add is the value. Where do I get the value from? If you remember correctly, when I ran that query, we got the value from the, the actual, we called it average. Do you remember we called it average? So I'm going to actually use a, okay, so the query chart, square bracket, the average field, the average field. I can't spell today. Average field. That field must be the value so whatever that number was in that in that average column then i want to get the actual okay what's the 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 label for this particular uh, bar well we're going to get that from the query from the the category so the query charts we bracket the category field like bakery and that go fetch that one of whichever so we're going to be on the first record go fetch the first records average go fetch its category and then i need to give it a particular color and in our one video we showed you how to go rgb and then we're just going to give it a random color i'm actually going to do this like this so we can see the, the different fields oh, no, v. there we go so you can see the different fields and then rgb um, we're going to give it a random number between 0 and 255. You could actually do 256 if you wanted to there. And I'm going to do that three times because we need a random green, a random red, and a random blue value for the color. So there we go. So add that to the chart. And that's literally it. And then go to the next uh, record, which would be canned food, for example. Go get canned foods average, display its uh, canned food label, give it a different color. So let's go ahead and look and see what that does. Oh, what are the errors? So random, I think I've missed out a extra bracket there. So there's an extra bracket, obviously, for the add we missed. So there's a bracket for the random, a bracket for the RGB, and then a bracket for the add. So there we go. So let's try it out. And average stock, boom. There we go. So we can see there are the values. You can see the values and you can obviously change the details of your chart. But there I've got the word average stock um, and stuff like that. So I'm getting all the different values there. Obviously, I don't think the, the vegetable part fit in there because of these labels there. But you get the idea. You get a nice little, oh, nice little chart. We can see the values, nice little values and stuff like that. Now, if you remember, just a little tip. If you, the previous um, video where we did a T-chart, we had like a line chart and we had to move up a certain number of uh, spaces, like 10 every time if we use the x y so you did something along these lines i'm just going to give you a tip for that if you are using the add x y like you're going chart example two dot series square bracket zero dot add x y so you want to plot the y values but you want the x to increment so the x value you need some sort of x value uh, but you are always going to put the average as the value that shows you how high it is for something along those lines, if you remember correctly. It was something along that line, and then we had the, I think it was T and blank. We could have the actual value there. And then you said CLT color, something along those lines. So that was what we did um, with a add. So how do we do this? this x value that's going to incrementally go up so what i would do in that case is i would have a r variable or some sort of integer and you would set it to a starting amount at the beginning so let's start it at for example number 10 so you want it at 10 if you want increments of 10 so then you would say okay at position r which would be 10 the first time go add the first plot and then when you want to move then you would increase r by 10 so that it goes to 20 for the next one. Or if you want to increase it by 5, you want to go 15, 20, 25. However you want the, the x axes to move for the different plots, you would then use your increase it by that. So the next time it does, it'll be 15. Next time it does, it'll be 20. And we'll be adding those values in five uh, block increments, basically, on your chart. So that's if you're using the add x, y. Okay. So there we go. So that's how you could, as an example of using a chart using SQL, there are lots of ways of doing it. You can just think about what your SQL statement is going to do and you combine that obviously with um, your, your chart, your T-chart. So we're going to go to the next example for the shapes. Okay, so we at our one where we used shapes. Okay, so we're going to do something like this. It's more convoluted. I would prefer the T-chart, but if you want to do it this way, you can. Um, so if you remember, I've still got the previous example where we clicked on, we did this type of thing where we added different components to the arrays. You can watch the previous video. And then we went through the database and then we did some sort of calculation like this where we displayed the label with the item. And then we displayed a, we had like a column, which was going to be busy with column one, and then column two, then column three. And then we basically used a scale of twice whatever the item stock is. 
and then we just had to uh, realign the top value so that it would go from the top to the bottom instead of it just dragging down so if you, remember, you don't understand with this you need to go watch the previous video um, so we're going to do something very similar to this so we're going to do it um, over here on the other button so what i've done is i've already done that exact same query that we just did exactly the same so now that we've got our query now we can basically take the similar stuff that we did here um, which is what going through the first and so on like that so this is what we basically doing so I'm going to copy this so we can adapt it slightly. So what are we doing? Okay. Um, so let's go and did I copy it? Let's go and copy it. So we're going to copy this part. So we're going to go through, but this time instead of the ADO items, we're going through the query. Okay. So average stock. So, so first of all, let's go paste it. So it's exactly the same idea. We're going to be going through the first value in the query chart. We're going to go until the chart not the end of the file chart example not chart it's a query query chart and it's i can actually just it'll be easier if i just copy this and this is okay this was for the query that we did there we don't want to worry about the category we want to do all the categories so i'm going to just take this away so what are we doing so we need to keep track of which column we're working with so i need some sort of cold count so over here i've got a cold count and i'm going to initialize the cold count to a zero so that when we get to the first one we can increase it so we're working with column one so the column one's label the caption must be whatever the query chart is and we want the category field so the category field okay then the column the the actual shape there that little shape one because we're dealing with shape one number one your top value must be whatever the call count is so whatever it is plus that and we're going to get the value from the average field times two. That's going to just shift it up. And then the height would be the query field with the average value. So if you're not too sure what this is, go look at the video on how to use a chart using shapes that explains that. And then we move to the next one and we increase the cold count and so on. So we can do something along those lines. So we did a query. So we went to the first field, which was whatever baked goods, for example, and we increased column count. So we are dealing with column shape one and we're dealing with label one and we change label one to whatever the category field is. So baked goods. And then the, the top value, the top value of shape one must be moved up. However much we are going to move it down. So when we change the, the height of it, it actually moves it from there to there so that so we basically want to shift it up the same amount so when it moves from there to there it ends at the point that we started at over there if that makes sense so let's run it and see what it does what are the errors oh there's too many ends yeah so let's there we go actually i might have moved the wrong end so that, that must actually wait we must move this next is not actually in the while you see there is my while loop i think i deleted the wrong end there so this must move inside of the while loop and that must be not ADO table we're not dealing with ADO table we're dealing with the query chart dot next query chart why am I spinning queries wrong today there we go so we do increase the call count we deal with column one do the changes to column one go to the next one then go to increase it to two do it and then go to the next one three do column three and so on so that's basically what we are doing so let's run it if I click on average stock Boom, there we go. So it's added the values. Obviously, we know there's going to be six exactly, so it works out quite nicely. If you've got too few or too less, then you're going to have to do that little shimmy that we did in the last, in the video, it shows you shapes where we hide all the ones that aren't being used, or we go up until six so that we don't go over the six that we're using, but you can do something along those lines. Okay, so just watch that video to see the other little tricks to make it look a little bit nicer. Um, but as I said, there I've shown you both techniques, the T chart and the using the shapes. Uh, my suggestion is I like the, the, it's a lot easier to use this. It looks a lot fancier. So use your T chart, learn about it, and then you can add little features and add little pie charts and stuff like that. So there we go. So good luck. Go enjoy and do your charts using SQL. For other RT Pat tips, go to our YouTube channel. Click on that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment. Go to the playlist. You'll see all the playlists for RT, especially the one for RT Pat tips. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the mister long way.